This week on ANN, Adra Indonesia continues to deliver aid after a second earthquake hits the country. Administrators and educators in North America vote to explore collaboration. And hundreds of communicators from around the world gather for the annual GAIN conference. These stories and more are coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, a second 7.0 earthquake struck Lombok, in Indonesia. Lombok was recently shaken by a 6.4 earthquake that left at least 12 people dead and hundreds trapped on Mount Rinjani, the island's most popular tourist spot. According to government data, more than 350 people have died, 14,000 were injured, and more than 64,000 houses were damaged. It is estimated that more than 380,000 people have been displaced. Currently, the ADRA Indonesia team are in the field conducting a rapid needs assessment as well as coordinating with government, humanitarian organizations, and community organizations. For more information, visit adraindonesia.org. Against a backdrop of tighter finances and dwindling enrollments at Adventist colleges and universities in North America, school administrators and church leaders voted overwhelmingly in favor of forming a strategic alliance to strengthen the overall educational system. August 12th's vote on what was dubbed the Chicago Declaration came after four days of presentations on the future of the Seventh-day Adventist Higher Education Summit following the North American Division Teachers Convention in Chicago. The declaration states, we share a commitment to shaping a strategic alliance consisting of a coalition of the willing with the goal of first piloting and then evaluating the efficacy of an eventual higher education system. We intend for this to result in a whole that is stronger than the sum of its parts. Details on the collaboration will be hammered out in coming months. A timetable is set for college and university presidents to discuss the issue with their various constituencies, and by the end of the calendar year, each campus is to select a representative to serve as a liaison between the schools. To read the full Chicago Declaration and more details about the 2018 Teachers Convention, visit nadadventist.org. Hundreds of communicators and IT professionals mingled among thousands of missionaries this year during the Global Adventist Internet Network. And that's because this year, GAIN took place at the same time the Adventist Church in the Northern Pacific region hosted the International Mission Congress. Before GAIN started, Adventist News Network, along with the Adventist Review, hosted the very first news summit, which brought together journalists from the church's various media outlets. We were there to catch all the action. Here's our report.
Up next, we hear about a special campery in Britain. Adventists have been shown to live seven to nine years longer when compared with other people in California. It's now been expanded into a much bigger study called Adventist Health Study 2, which is looking at what are the factors that make a difference in the lifespan of Seventh-day Adventists. It's been publicized in Time Magazine 1966, National Geographic 2005, US News and Today 2009, where one of the comments that was made, if you want to live longer, live like a Seventh-day Adventist. So the evidence is clear, it's all in. Seventh-day Adventists have a definite health advantage. I'm Dr. Peter Landless, I'm a physician, I have the basic uh, MD qualifications as well as a specialty in family medicine, a specialty in internal medicine, uh, a specialty in cardiology and a subspecialty in nuclear cardiology. The latter two have included fellowships in the American College of Cardiology, the American Society of Nuclear Cardiology and being board certified in nuclear cardiology here in the United States. I had the singular privilege of serving on the Physicians Board of Healthcare for President Nelson Mandela. I was second in charge of the Department of Cardiology at our university at that time. He's a man who just shares the joy of loving people and wanting to see reconciliation take place. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience. We sometimes try to spread a message of good news. We must be the message of good news. Well, how do we do that? We do that by meeting the needs of people, by caring for them unconditionally, by having no strings attached to our relationships with individuals. It, it's by feeding people when they are hungry. It's by giving them clothing when they are naked. And that tends to move people to say, well, why would you do that? Well, the reason that we would do that is because that's what Jesus did. Recently, more than 2,000 adventurers ranging in age from four to nine years old assembled on the grounds of the South of England showgrounds in Ardington, West Sussex, to be part of the first adventurer campery ever held in the British Union Conference. The young campers experienced the full blast of Britain's variations in weather, essential camping skills, uniform inspections, awards, and all the packed activities planned for the extended weekend. The Adventist Church in Britain sent this report. What are your initial thoughts about the weekend? Oh, all together, we are all a little bit shocked with the, with the number because we, we, we planned this for a thousand people and uh, in the last uh, two months this uh, doubled. So when we had a thousand, suddenly another thousand showed up. All together it's just beautiful to be with a family like this, not too far from London, uh, with the people from all around the UK and also from Sweden and Slovenia. It's all together a very beautiful experience. You see Adventure Camp, you've come all the way from Slovenia. Slovenia, yes. How did you come to be a part of this? Oh, we met uh, your chef uh, in uh, Mastergate camp last year and then we decided to join to see how you work with small children, with adventurers because we are a small country with not so many pathfinders and we don't work extra with adventurers and pathfinders and yes, we wanted to learn. But hi, sounds very interesting. Tell us a little bit what you're doing here. Well, we're showing the kids what uh, life is like in other areas of the world where they don't have access to tap water. Um, so we're demonstrating with this little pump how much effort it takes to really get some water up uh, with the pump into a bucket. Um, and they all seem to like it. It's, uh, it's going well. You've got quite a lot of followers here. Oh, yes, yes. It's very busy. And uh, we tell the story about, you know, how people live in other countries. And uh, I think they like the experience. So, uh, yeah, it's going well. It's going very well. And you've got some other activities going on around here as well. Yes, yes. We, uh, we are um, selling bread in one of the stands. Then we are also selling chickens and goats. Um, and in order to, uh, to get access to them, they have to use biblical or Sabbath money. Um, and so they don't have enough money, so they have to barter a little bit to see if they can find ways in order to, uh, to get enough money to, uh, to get their supplies. 
Excellent. Wonderful life skills for these children. Oh, yeah, I think they're enjoying it. It's a lovely, windy day, but they are in good spirits and we're all having a good time here. I'm from Brazil, but we uh, go to Central London uh, Portuguese-speaking church. And how many is in your group? Uh, we're together with New Boat, so our group is about 13, and I think they are probably the same. And why do you think, or how do you think, you know, how important it is this weekend for learning the, the children to learn their life skills? Well, my child is very shy, and she's been, since Thursday, I can see the difference. The first day, she didn't want to do anything. She was hiding behind me, saying, no, mommy, I don't want to go. And today, she ran into our tent, saying, mommy, mommy, it's activity time. Uh, so I think she's just more sociable and learning so many things, so very nice. Uh, uh uh, somebody just approached me today and said that actually this is this is the first um, it is the first BUC adventure Capri for sure. But uh, they're saying this is also the first European adventure uh, Capri. Well, there is a plenty of potential for this. It, it, it can easily turn into a small or big um, international Capri when it comes to this part of the world because we here Americans have it as well. So the idea is to bring this family together once again, hopefully before the next uh, BUC Pathfinder Camporee. So that's the hope and we'll see how it goes. More than 80 children from the small Adventist church in Kamabolo village, located outside Port Moresby, received big rescue Bibles after Central Papua Conference Children's Ministries Director Ruthie Batu visited in early August this year. Of the 103 members at Kamabolo Adventist Church, more than 60 are children. Literacy continues to be a major challenge in the discipling of children and older folks in Papua New Guinea. Furthering the discipleship work, the Kamabolo Church also initiated a Bible study every Sunday, which attracts church members of all ages, including children. The church also operates Kamabolo Adventist Elementary School, whose two volunteer teachers say that their passion for children and to see them learning more about Jesus and his love for them drives them to continue teaching despite no pay. Last week, we told you how our team from ANN Video went with Adra Connections to build a school in the heart of Brazil's Amazon. This week on ANN, we wanted to share with you the vision and the prayers that enabled that opportunity. Quando a gente chega no campo missionário, principalmente no ambiente onde tem tanta necessidade, a gente chega com aquela vontade de fazer, de servir, de poder ajudar no que for preciso para ajudar as comunidades ribeirinhas ou indígenas. O que, que a gente pode fazer para ajudar aqui? Ele falou, olha, talvez a gente poderia construir uma escola aqui. Adra Connections is designed to show the people in the United States all of the great work that's being done in Brazil and Peru and all over Latin America and other parts of the world too, but we're gonna focus on our Latin American neighbors. And now we can take students, we can take church groups down there. Então no início de 2013 veio uma missão para essa região. Eles viram que as crianças tinham aula em uma pequena sala, mais de 20 crianças em uma única sala, um único professor. Um dos senhores que estava nessa missão, ele saiu daqui em prantos. Parece que ele não queria sair daqui mais. Ele disse para o Brad, Brad, eu quero doar o dinheiro de comprar um terreno para vocês. Começou então aí a se concretizar, se tomar forma ao sonho. Eu confesso que no primeiro momento eu assim eu achei legal e tal, né? Mas assim não botei muita fé e por alguma razão é, Deus foi colocando no meu coração, cara, você tem que acompanhar, você tem que fazer esse sonho junto com Ele. Cheguei para Ele e falei, cara, assim despretensiosamente eu falei, olha, eu sou arquiteto, se você quiser eu posso fazer um projeto para vocês. Eu fiquei assim, eu não vou promover, o Daniel me ligava. Por que, que você não promove no evento? Não, Daniel, eu não vou falar da escola porque a gente tem muita necessidade no Luzeiro. Aí eu ia para um encontro, pá, Deus daria mais dinheiro para a escola. E toda vez, Daniel, você não vai acreditar, entrou mais dinheiro. Eu acho que tem uns cinco anos né, que foi começado esse, esse projeto. Então foi uma benção. Deus abriu as portas de tal maneira que 
é muito bom saber que a gente tem um Deus que faz esses milagres na vida da gente. Né? Então daí foi uma sequência, a gente foi, eu fui trazendo os grupos do NASP, né? é, algumas vezes, mais de uma vez por ano, então em 2016 a gente veio, 2017 a gente veio, e agora em 2018 a gente está vendo é, o progresso de tudo isso, e graças a Deus a gente está aqui é para terminar esse projeto depois de vários anos. Né? A gente é, teve essa benção de fazer essa parceria com a Adron é, Internacional, em que está apoiando inteiramente esse projeto e trouxe esse grupo de fora também para participar juntamente conosco. E a gente finalizar esse sonho, que já não é mais o um sonho apenas do Daniel e do Rolf e do Brad. É um sonho que acabou virando um sonho de muita gente. And you know, this is a very special trip because a lot of times a project like this will have donors who will provide the money, but they never get to see the trip. They don't actually get to go. They don't actually get to see the school actually work and build the school. This trip is special because our donors who have paid for this, this school to be built are the ones who are actually here building. It's, a, it's an expression of service just to be able to pay with your own money to go, to use your vacation time to come. And The, every asset, every factor of this trip is an expression of that service. Poxa, que eu sonho é ver eles tudo formado, né? Com meus netos, com meus filhos. Um já disse que quer ser médico, outro quer ser é, engenheiro. Então isso satisfaz né, a gente, porque eu tenho certeza que muitas e muitas pessoas, através dessa escola, vão conhecer Jesus. Como já, já tem pessoas, já tem frutos desse, 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 desse trabalho. O Isa quer ser médico. Eu vejo o Isa como um bom médico. Ele tem um cuidado muito grande mesmo, sabe? A Martinha quer ser missionária, ela vai ser uma ótima missionária. Ela é muito líder. Todos ali, sabe? Todos. É uma turma pequena, mas são seis vidas preciosas que ele vai usar muito para a honra e glória dele. E é um prazer fazer parte da vida dele, sim. <risos> If you or your church, school, or business would like to join an Adra Connections trip, visit adraconnections.org. Coming up, Emily Mastrop is here to tell you how you can make the most of your Instagram posts. But up next, Adventist Mission has more on sowing church seeds. May I work in with you, young fella? Yeah. Go for it. That's the way you do it. You gotta put a little weight on it. Well, I'll put it back up here for you.
welcome back. Every year, thousands of Seventh-day Adventists become involved in church planting efforts. We thank God for the literally thousands of new groups that have been planted and established since Global Mission began in 1990. Adventist Mission has more. The sower went out to sow. Some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where the soil was thin. The plants grew, but in the hot sun, they withered and died. Some seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on the good soil, where it produced an abundant crop, a field of believers growing together to the glory of God. Farmers know that good soil takes preparation. They cut trees, haul rocks, and plow the field. They could just scatter the seeds and hope for the best. But best results come through preparation. Christ's method of ministry prepares soil. Jesus mingled with people. He felt their pain and showed them sympathy. He met their needs and won their confidence. Then they were ready to follow him. Around the world today, thousands of church planters are putting Christ's method of ministry into practice. For best results, farming takes time. So does planting a church. Why church planting? Because it's part of the Gospel Commission. Because it's how the early church grew. And it's how the Seventh-day Adventist Church has grown. And last, but not least, it works. Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org, then click on videos at the top. Do you ever not have time to post something to Instagram, but worry you're gonna forget later? Yeah, Emily Bastrop is here to tell you about a cool new app that allows you to schedule your Instagram posts. Many people know that you can use apps and websites to schedule your posts for Instagram, but did you know that you can also set them to post automatically? Instagram is a great way to share photos, and for business profiles, it can be helpful to have your posts on a schedule. There are a lot of different sites that you can use to schedule your posts. For the church's Instagram, I use Later.com. Later is the number one marketing platform for Instagram. They even have a free plan that allows you to post up to 30 posts a month. Until recently, Later would send notifications to your phone through the app to remind you to post. Now, you can set photos to post automatically and Later is super easy to use. You can upload your picture, add your caption, and then schedule it. When you're scheduling the post, they'll offer the choice to receive notifications or to post automatically. There are a few limitations to auto-publishing. It is only available to Instagram business profiles. In order to switch, you need to connect your Instagram account to a Facebook account. Also, you can only schedule single photos directly to Instagram. To schedule multiple photos or videos, you still need to use notifications. Even if you don't have a business profile, Later can still be really helpful for you if you want to schedule your posts. It can really come in handy, and Later will also show you what your profile will look like after you've posted what you've scheduled. So check out Later.com for yourself, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Adventist Church. And finally for today's episode, let's turn to David Trim for a look at Adventist history. This week, the life of Roland David Quinn is remembered. This week in Adventist history, we focus on another forgotten hero of our faith. On August 13, 1928, Rollin David Quinn died at Eugene, Oregon. He had been born on August 27, 1869 in Mankato, Minnesota. 
As a young pastor, Quinn worked several years in Montana and Utah, including in the Salt Lake City Mission, before in 1903 he and his wife Lottie accepted a call to serve in Australia. The Quinns spent five years in ministry in Queensland and Tasmania. Rollin returned to the United States as president of the Montana Conference, but in 1909 was elected president of the Greater New York Conference as part of a renewed emphasis on city mission. Why call someone from the big sky country of Montana to lead inner city work? It was because, as a leader, Rollin Quinn was both a good financial manager and a man of deep spirituality. As his obituary put it, from the beginning of his ministry, Brother Quinn laid special stress upon the reception of the Holy Spirit. A colleague wrote of how his life was marked with deep humility and devotion, a genial manner and open-hearted sincerity. From 1914 to 1919, as president of the Atlantic Union Conference, Quinn continued to stress evangelistic outreach in the region's many big cities. In 1919, he was called to the World Church headquarters as a field secretary of the General Conference. His death nine years later, aged just 58, came suddenly. Quinn's life was a reality of the ideal of a servant leader. And that was this week in Adventist History. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh day Adventist Church. We'd love to hear from you. Send us your feedback and tell us how your church is making a difference in its community. Be sure to capture plenty of video footage and photos, then write up a summary of the event's important details. And feel free to send a full video report as well. Yeah, and you can reach us by sending an email to ANNvideo11 at gmail.com. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 15 and 16. Elroy, won't you read that for us? Sure. Uh, the passage says, The answer's simple. Live right, speak the truth, despise exploitation, refuse bribes, reject violence, mm -hmm. avoid evil amusements. This is how you raise your standard of living. Amen. A nourishing, satisfying way to live. Well, that's our program for this week. Remember, you can always visit news.adventist.org for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.